What's up, guys? This is in response to some of the comments that I received on the video of 20 million people or 25 million people in the danger zone. Years and years ago, I used to be homeless. And when you, when you first become homeless or you're suffering, everyone has a lot of compassion. But there is a ticking clock on that compassion. After you've been homeless for a while or you've been going through it, people just simply stop caring. And I've, like, I've seen these comments like, you know, the system, we need to fix the system. Let me go ahead and tell you how the system used to be. How many of you remember Charles Dickens, the orphans of London, Men and women used to have children, and because there was no safety net, there was no social security, they would literally leave these children begging on the streets in London and America. That's what we used to have. Like, if your parents and didn't look out for you, you didn't have anyone in your family to, to be care for you, you were literally on the street looking like a street urchin, dirty face, eating out of garbage cans. This is how many people was. There, were no, there was no social security. There was no welfare. There was no food stamps. People were either living well or they were ass out. And one of the things that many of you who have this unrealistic utopian view of what should happen. First of all, the powers that be simply don't care about the little guy. And I've been trying to get this message across to you because when I was homeless and I went through that whole process, I learned real quick that people don't give a damn. I learned real quick who my friends were, I lost most of my friends. And one of the things, you know, and to the real estate people who are not real real estate people, Go ahead and Google what has happened to Florida real estate. When I said that some people were selling their homes for six figures over asking price, that's what I was talking about. A lot of you hear me say stuff and instead of doing some research and going, oh, he was right. You want to refute me in the comments. Florida real estate has appreciated 30% in the last year. 30%. 30%. But more importantly, um, I haven't forgotten where I co I've come from. Yes, I'm doing well now, but I haven't forgotten. And this is one of the reasons that I am going on this tirade and I'm calling out people and saying they're giving BS advice. Because when I was in that state, I was trying to get advice, help, I was buying all of it because essentially there was success magazine, entrepreneur magazine, these magazines that you can get from the grocery store or Barnes and Nobles in the back of the magazines. They had these courses that you can order. And I spent a lot of money ordering those courses and none of them made me any money. Pretty much what's going on with YouTube. And this is one of the reasons because for a few years I was stuck in that loop of easy money, I can buy this course, this course is gonna hook me up. I spent so much time, I spent so much money, I spent so many hours chasing things that weren't real. And that's one of the reasons that I say the things I say on here because I used to be you. I used to be hungry, I used to be desperate, I used to be scared. I would like wake up some morning and just pray to God that nothing bad would happen that day. I used to be there. I used to be homeless. And here's the thing. The majority of you were never homeless. There may be a few of you who were out there who went through what I went through, but the majority of you haven't been homeless. So when you're coming here and talking about Glendon, you're forgetting about the people. I am actually not forgetting about the people. This is why my message is so harsh. This is why I'm trying to get through to you guys that no one's going to save you. 
The government's not going to save you. Uh, there's no special uh, aunts and uncles and grandparents that are going to save you. No one is going to save you. And this whole notion that let's take minimum wage. I used to be a minimum wage person. I only had the skills to get minimum wage jobs once I lost my certification after I got fired. That's all I could do. And until I made myself more valuable, I did not start making more money. And th there's this whole notion that we should pay people a living wage for showing up at their JLB. I, I, I disagree with that. I feel that people should make themselves more valuable. People should educate themselves. A minimum wage job isn't something that you stay in the rest of your life. It's a starting spot. And one of the things that a lot of you guys don't understand is the value of, of having a sense of urgency. I'm 54 years old. And if you were to start putting $100 away at 20 years, 20 years old, and keep doing it for 40 years, you'd be a millionaire, right? I am 54 years old. I am six, I'm six years away from 60. Six years away from 60, right? So that is an incredibly long time. And one of the reasons that I am pushing my message with such urgency, why I'm being so harsh while I'm speaking to you reckless, like it's just you and me, is many of you are wasting time. I asked some people who were saying, these folks are not lazy. Actually, I would disagree, and I'm gonna tell you how. I gave away free courses that if you had opened up the courses and did the work, you would have made money. 95% of the people who signed up for those courses didn't do jack. Didn't do jack. Not exactly enterprising. A lot of people are lazy. Sure, there are some people out there who are busting their hump. There are some people out there who work in two, three jobs. They're doing everything they can. There are those people who are not lazy. There are those people who are just need a little opportunity, need a little help, and I'm there for those people. But there is a segment of society that is lazy. And this is one of the things. Why do you have state governors at this moment canceling additional federal stimulus money in the terms of additional $300 for unemployment because they know these folks ain't going to work? When I started doing my live streams at the beginning of the pandemic, I predicted this. I said, these folks who get this money, they're going to clown. They're going to clown. And many of you um, are trying to imagine a perfect world where everyone is enterprising. Everyone is working as hard as they can. Every, it's not simply not true. Most folks don't work as hard as they can. Many folks have a job and they do just enough to keep their job. They don't go above and beyond. They just don't. And this is what you got average. And in America, you can coast. You can be an average person. You can do average stuff and you can live okay. You can have a place to live. You can have a car to drive. You can have food to eat. You can have a place to stay being very, very average, not remarkable, not special. And you know what average income is? 30 to $50,000. With 70% of the country making $30,000 or less. So that means most of the country is very, very average. And what happens is if you want to elevate, you're gonna to have to stop being average. Now, many of you are really surprised at all of the, you know, I'm in my second month of the car rental business. And many of you is like, is this worth it? Because you have been seduced, you have been whispered to that you can make a lot of money and not bust a sweat. Now, I understand how business works. And essentially, 
I have been working seven days a week for the last two months because of this business. And I know that, you know, someone asked me, what's your plan on vacation? I'm not taking a vacation until I get an employee. I can't. There's too many things that go on. Like this phone can ring right now. Someone could uh, call and say the car broke down or lost a key or something. And I'm not in the position where I can have enough training to actually hire someone. Yeah, I can go out and get someone and it's like, hey, here's the phone, here are the keys, handle that. And then they could just have a total, they could fail. They could fail madly because I haven't properly trained these people. And to properly train these people, I'm gonna have to go through it. And a lot of you don't understand that. It's like, you know, hey, he got all this money, he's doing well, why is he going through this? Because I feel 14 months from now, this business is gonna pay off extremely handsomely. And here's the thing, even when I get to my number where I wanna be, cars are still gonna break down, I'm gonna have renters doing dumb stuff. This is the business. Uh, someone was saying that Hertz and Avis and National, actually, Google this, Hertz is in bankruptcy and they are sending a lot of people to jail. Hertz files literally thousands of stolen car reports a year. Hertz, Google it. Don't believe me, Google it. So Hertz, National, Avis, they're going through the same problems on a much larger scale. They just don't have a social media presence who's talking about it. Because many of y'all like, well, they wouldn't be doing this to Hertz. Actually, Hertz is, um, because their systems are annotated, Hertz is actually filing stolen vehicle reports on people who've actually paid for the rental and they're going through some lawsuits because of it. And uh, I did, I put it in the comment section and the, one of the realest guys on here, car Airbnb is in the comment sec, it's in the commentary, commentary section, uh, who actually gave some of the realest advice, was telling the truth about the business. And based upon the comments, it's like he only has two cars on Toro which if you don't systemize this, you don't set up processes, you don't hire people, you don't turn this into a real business, this business can break you. It can break you down. Because like, I remember I was laying in bed and it was 6.30 and my phone was ringing. And, it was, and I knew the number and I was like, oh God, what has happened now? And this is one of the reasons that I'm got probably tomorrow, because tomorrow is a really good day. I'm going to get a phone. But that's the reality of business. A lot of business is messy. And a lot of you want me to speak to you like these other YouTubers. Rah, rah, you can do it. You just go, girl. Just have it in your mind. You can... I feel that that's absolute bullshit. Look here, boys and girls, you are adults. And I'm gonna speak to you like you are an adult. I'm not gonna speak to you like you a little child and I have to whisper in your ear and pretend and leave out all of the bad sides of business. I'm not gonna do that. So, you know, a lot of you who feel that I've forgotten where I come from, because I know what's waiting for you if you don't activate yourself. You know what's waiting on you? Um, a lot of bad stuff. Poverty, homelessness. Do you know a lot of mothers who were getting child support end up in poverty after the child support stops? See, you don't have as much time as you think to live your life and to build your fortune. You, you don't have as much time. Like, Essentially, if you look at your life in 10 year chunks, you will see when you were 20 and then you went to 30, that was a big change. And then you were 30, then you went to 40 and that was a big change. And you went from 40, you went to 50. That was a big change. And these 10 year chunks will happen quicker than you think. You don't have as much time. And this is why I speak the way that I speak to you guys. So you guys will start taking action take action because 
one of the things that you have to understand, and I'm speaking to you as from the perspective of a formerly homeless person, I was sleeping in my damn car. I was taking showers in the gym and I will never forget that time. I will never forget that time. It was horrible. And if you go ahead and continue to be seduced by these charlatans, these con men, these people who are putting out videos just simply to get views, not to really help you, you're wasting time. You're wasting a lot of time. You are really, really handicapping yourself. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand and I want you guys to acknowledge is there's two phases of life. Like I said, someone asked me if I was going to take a vacation. I fully don't expect to take a vacation for about a year. I'll have a long weekend here and there. That was it. Like Sunday, I stayed in bed to 12. That was kind of like a vacation. I've been through this before. I went through this with my commercial office furniture business. I went through this with the storage auction business. The beginning was rough. It was ugly. It was hard. It was full of mistakes. It was full of things happening. I remember I thought I was doing really well. This was probably my second, maybe going into my third month of the storage auction business. And I bought this unit. You know what the unit was full of? Rags. I spent like 300 bucks on a unit full of dirty rags and boxes. Rags. That was the only thing that was in there. $300 down the drain. And I actually thought about, I ain't going to keep doing this because this is ridiculous. I mean, I, I had to come home and I had to talk to myself and I said, okay, there are people who've been doing this for multiple years. They know something that you don't know. Because you've been buying garbage, you've been buying junk. And then I started to look at what the people who had been out there for years, what they were doing. And I noticed that they consistently bought big, full units. Consistently. So I remember up on Cobb Parkway, I bought my first unit full from the ruler to the Tula. They raised the door, stuff was literally falling out. Unit cost me like 500 bucks. Remember, I spent $300 on a unit full of rags. And that unit, I spent 500 bucks and made like $6,000. There was three bedroom sets in there, washer and dryer, living room set, collectibles. There was all kinds of goodies in there. $500 turned into 6,000. And I was like, oh, but if I had like gave up, and like, this is too hard. I ain't going to keep doing this. I spent maybe $30,000 before I got to that point. And I did not make my money back. Once I started buying those big full units, totally changed. Totally changed. I made that $30,000 that I lost back in about six months. And one of the things that is happening, like uh, I'm going to do a special video about the Porsche because the Porsche story is wild. It is completely wild. Um, so that's going to be a separate video, but I've learned some stuff in this car business. And today I recovered the Porsche and this, this is, this is, this is about business. I made not one, but two connections that I can do business with today. I mean, tomorrow, I'll, I'll talk about it because I'm not going to go into it this video, but yeah, I met two people that I connected with today that we're going to do business. So my car getting stolen has led me to two people who can help me with this business. And I mean, really help me big time with this business. I am talking like crazy big time with this business. So. Once again, many of you have been seeing the trials and tribulations. You've been putting in the comments. You've been paying too much for repairs. You've been doing this. You've been doing that. And once again, 
You guys haven't been through this. You don't understand. This is part of the journey, man. This is the reality. And this month, I'm going to make probably 14000 And I made 6000 last month, probably 14000 this month. And next month, I'm probably going to do 20000 25000 And that's the max number of my current fleet. My current fleet can do, actually, my current fleet can actually do 30000 but my current fleet is going to change because uh, I'm getting rid of the Mini. I've got some other cars I'm getting rid of. I'm getting rid of the Range Rovers because I have learned. And one of the things that is really cool about business is you always get a second chance if you keep fighting, if you keep going forward. Because just like I learned in the office furniture business, just like I learned in the storage auction business, just like I learned in this business, that like today was a better day because I have made some really good connections. Some really, I mean, one of them is literally blowing my mind because if what we talked about today pans out tomorrow, this is going to be as Flossie Carter say a go, a big go. And one of the things is a lot of you have wondered like, why would I do this? Because I sell online courses. I have a YouTube business. I have cleaner easier ways to make money. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for you because the vast majority of YouTubers will not show you this. They will not tell you this. They will not be this transparent. Kudos to Erica for she's like, I'm getting out the trucking business. I'm, I'm reliquidating my fleet. I'm just keeping your two trucks. That is rare on YouTube for people to actually tell you the truth. You want to know why? At car Eric car B and B this dude was telling the whole truth about Toro and stuff and essentially um, people didn't watch him because it was like oh they want to watch Samara's experience because she's pretty and she speaks in this nice voice and Samara leaves a lot of stuff out you have learned more about the car rental business from me in these last two months than you have from most of these youtubers except for a car BNB who actually was telling you the truth. And I'm doing this to show you, because see, right now, it's kind of like a football game, right? First two quarters, I got my ass kicked. We're going into the locker room in halftime. Coach is going to make some adjustments. And then the second quarter, we're going to ball out. We're going to ball out. How many times have you seen that? Remember what happened to Atlanta and the Patriots? Atlanta should have won that game. Atlanta should have won the Super Bowl. Patriots came back, went in at halftime, made adjustments. University of Alabama. I have seen Alabama get pushed around the first two quarters, go in the locker room, make adjustments, win the game. So essentially, we're not, in, you know, we're still in the second quarter on this, but I'm doing this to actually show you how a business can be grimy. It can be rough. It can be not really that attractive and it can turn into something beautiful because based upon my numbers, and once again, I got my high numbers and I have my low numbers, my high numbers, I will get to 1.5 million a year in 24 months. Okay. That's my high number. My low number, if things continue to build bad, I have a lot of repairs and stuff. My low number, is seven hundred thousand dollars a year which is like 60 yeah about 60 55 thousand dollars a month that's my low number fifty five thousand dollars a month for a business that is mostly debt free uh, that's still a win because that's an additional stream of income and once again i'm going to teach you and I may be misspeaking here, but I'm going to say it. Teach you and some people who've been doing the car business for years how to actually do the car business. Because uh, today, the guy I met, we had a good conversation, and he said something. Uh, he says that most business owners are afraid to hire, and this is what keeps them small. And I 100% agree with that. Because this guy has nine shops and about 100 employees and looking to grow more looking to grow more. So th this is a really, really good connect. And um, 
one of the things that I want you guys to understand is I haven't forgotten where I come from. You know, I know what will be waiting for you if you don't take action and stop pussyfooting around. I know what's going to be waiting for you. And it ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be pretty. It's going to be rough. It's going to be harsh. It's going to be devastating for many of you. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand is confidence comes from success and success comes from taking action and taking action leads to mistakes. Someone asked me, it's like, how come you made so much money? Cause I made a lot of mistakes. Each mistake that I made is an opportunity for me to learn how to make more money. Like with these cars, like uh, the Porsche is gone. The Range Rovers, once I get the titles, they're gone because I have learned that those cars bring me undesirable customers. They bring me the wrong people. I'm telling y'all, y'all gonna holler and scream when I tell this poor story, because it is crazy. It is insane what went down with that Porsche. So I want you guys to understand, and I want you guys to be aware that the information that I put on this channel isn't coming from theory. It's coming from practical application in real life. And like some of you, like the real estate, like, you know, it's just conjecture. I mean, I don't care if you don't like the facts. Facts don't care if you don't like them. Facts are facts. I don't care if you like, don't like the fact that if you trip and fall, gravity's going to wear your ass out. You may not like it, but that is a law, a mutable law of nature. Gravity is real. And a lot of you don't like this because I am not the, if I'm, if I'm going to be the boogeyman of YouTube, cool, because it is time that someone actually told you guys the truth time that someone actually told you the truth and told you how to start a business. Because here, here's the thing, and this is your handicap because many of you are scared to start a business because in the beginning you're going to fuck up. And that's going to keep you on the sidelines. And I'm saying embrace that. Go ahead, make your mistakes and keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Because that's what I did. I was homeless. I was homeless. And most of you are not homeless. So you actually, if you were just to take the lessons and stop thinking that you're smarter than me, because I'm about to be an elitist motherfucker here. You're not smarter than me. You want to know why? Because your life doesn't reflect the results of being smarter than me. If you were smarter than me, you would be living better than me. You cannot be smarter than me and make less money, have a less of a life. That, that makes no sense. So if you were smarter than me, you would be doing better than me. If you ain't doing better than me, you ain't smarter than me. I know that may sound elitist. I mean, you know, a lot of people don't like the fact that there are some people who are better than other people. There are some people who can jump higher. There's some people who, who think better. There's some people who take action. There, there's someone on this planet who can day trade from day one and because they have special abilities and make money. Whereas 99% of the people who day trade lose money. There are people who are better. There are people who are bigger. There are people who are badder. And essentially, one of the things that I have learned is my place. Like right now, you know, I have two months of car rental business experience under my belt, two months. And by August, I'll be making more money than most of your car uh, rental people on YouTube are making. You know why? Because I'm gonna build a real business. I'm not gonna rely on Toro and I'm not gonna rely on hire car. I am actually going to get my own commercial insurance so I can rent my cars to anyone else. And I'm building the database. So in the future, I'll be able to rent my cars out to whoever I want to have my own insurance because uh, the claims process, like right now I have a lost key, I have gas, I have this bumper, I have some other claims and I found out the claims are not going to be in my ACH payout they're going to be in a separate check that's going to be mailed to my house. Little, you know, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. So once again, 
you know, if you don't like the message, don't watch because I will force you to ponder. I will force you to think about some things that you want to think in the state of the economy right now in America, we have a bunch of lazy people. You want to know how I can say that with great deal of confidence. When I was in the storage auction business, I would watch a Mexican, a Mexican who would just cross the border, be here illegally, come into America, find him a wife, get her pregnant, have two kids, go out and work some contracting job, and within five years, be driving up to my warehouse in a dually F-250, has his own contracting business, and bought a house in Duluth in five years. Five years from coming here, from arriving here. Five years. So don't tell me a lot of Americans are not lazy. You are lazy. A lot of Americans are lazy. And this, this, is, this is one of the things I used to see. It. It's like, man, I need to work like a Mexican. Because I have seen this over and over and over. Someone who wasn't here. I remember I had this Brazilian dude in there. Uh, Brazilians, South Americans, uh, Haitians, Nigerians. They have a different work ethic. And they come to this country and within five or 10 years, they're living a better standard of living than the average American. What, what's the difference? They educate themselves and they work. They work. You know, it's funny. Like, this is one of my little guilty pleasures. I like to have my nails done because, you know, it's just one of my things. And the owner of the shop does my nails better than any one of her technicians. You know, and I talked to her and she said, ah, I started off as a technician. And she said, whenever I worked on someone, I always did my best job possible. She does my nails better than anyone else in there. And it, that's one of the things, because essentially she has a high level of proficiency, but she owns that shop. And she, you know, when it gets busy, she'll come down and she'll do what she needs to do. And a lot of people it's like, well, she's the owner. Why is she working? Because she is a professional. She's a professional. So once again, a lot of you are talking this whole stuff about this utopian, you know, what the, I'm here to tell you, it ain't going to change. If you don't get it from me, you need to get it from somewhere. It's not going to change. The system which used to be much harsher than it is now. I am talking crazy harsh. I am talking, I mean, we had people eating out of garbage cans. There was no safety net. There was no social safety net. Right now in America, if you're not working, you can get food stamps, you can get a place to stay, you can get Medicaid. Back in those days, there was nothing. There was nothing. And understand, if you choose to bask in that socialist basket, someone else is going to decide what you do. Someone else is going to decide how you live. Someone's going to decide how much food you eat. Someone's going to be making these decisions other than you. And once again, coming from being homeless, coming from living on the streets, coming from not knowing where I was going to sleep because I would park my car in certain places because, you know, you try to be off the beaten path. I remember, and once again, anyone that's going to make this talk because of my, I used to be you guys. I used to be you. I used to think like you. I used to act like you. I used to do similar things to you. And once again, I wasn't getting the kind of results I'm getting now. You want to know why? Because I stopped doing what average people do. I stopped doing that. And now I have a different life. And essentially this car rental business is gonna make me even richer, even richer. But right now we're in the startup phase, the beginning phase, the messy phase. And a lot of you are just shocked. This is business, baby. This is how it goes. And each day I learn a little bit more and I'll, you know, to add to my success ratio because there's going to be a moment there's going to be months in the future cars are not going to break down i'm not going to have these clowns as renters I'm, I'm working on it i'm building out a business 
And one of the things you guys have got to understand, if you want to build the business, this is what you're going to go through. This is the price for having that mansion in Buckhead. This is the price for having that fancy vacation. This is the price having more money in the bank than you could ever consider spending. This is the price. This is where we are. So I'm going to be doing some new training, the corporate papers. And what we're going to do is we're going to take your business and rip it apart. And then we're going to push you and I'm going to talk smack. I'm going to talk to you like a drill sergeant because you got to take action. Stop sitting on your ass and wishing and dreaming and watching these fake ass YouTubers. So that's your message right now. So I will see you guys in the next one.